we are going to be looking at The Prince of Egypt today, which was supposed to be the first DreamWorks movie released by their animation division, that is, which we all know is the main division now. But of course, because of rivalry, complications, we got Ants first. Of course, they were supposed to only be manufacturing 2D movies at the time. They really didn't want to do CGI, but they ended up doing two during this early period of their lifetime span. Um, until the animation died, 2D animation kind of died in the early 2000s. This was an idea by the head of the animation studio, which was Jeffrey Katzenberg, the infamous Jeffrey Katzenberg. Uh, two, was, what was it, Quibi he wanted to push? Uh, yeah, uh, he wanted to make this movie for a very long time at Disney, but Disney's like, we don't want to do a religious movie. So uh, once he got be part of DreamWorks as his own head, he's like, I'm making that movie I always wanted to. F Disney, and we got The Prince of Egypt from that, which is, like I said, kind of a religious movie. I mean, not in a kind of, it's directly based off a story from the Bible. And uh, here's where my bias comes in. I am not religious at all, so I'm willing to not give High Priest a movie. Not that it's a bad movie. But I think a lot of people who are religious just like it just because it, it, it's part of the religion to like it. Which is, yeah, I, you guys are kind of biased. But I don't know how exactly true that is. I can see pulling straws here. But I will be noting that this is an adaptation of a story that some people believe is true. Even though most of it is mythology. Let's get into the movie. Uh, one thing I gotta say is that it opened up very strong. It's a musical, so it starts off with our first song, Deliver Us. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to play any of the music for you because... I already get copyrighted enough, however, the, I will link a uh, playlist to all the songs in the description. I do recommend it because the soundtrack is one of the best parts, though I will be mentioning when that song does not match up. But this Deliver Us scene, the way it's animated and, uh, and done, I think is ex pretty well done. Probably the best part of the movie and everything from here is downhill, if that makes any sense. Anyway, the story, well, you're probably wondering if, you don't, if you're not Jewish or Christian or Muslim, I don't know. Do, do, you, does, do Muslims have this in the, their, their, in their version of the in the Quran? I really don't know. I know they're all connected because of the Abraham Rick stuff. Ugh, I'm not religious, so I don't really care. Anyway, uh, if you don't know, the, uh, it, the, the Egyptians are killing the Hebrews who are slaves. Uh, I gotta say, one thing that is not historically true, none of the Moses story is historically accurate. Sorry to say that to anybody who's religious, but... Uh, it, there was never a time recorded in ancient Egyptian history where they owned slaves that were Jewish. They owned slaves, but they didn't own any that were mostly Hebrew. Sorry, that, that ethnicity comes directly from Judea, or ancient Judea, which is modern-day Israel. And I'm not going to mention anything on de nothing to do with modern-day Israel, because that's a lot of politics, and I don't have to get time to get into that. We're watching a movie here, and it's a, not a bad movie either, even though the basket here looks really uh, CGI, because it is. So yeah, that mom there we saw sent her first, not firstborn, the newest born down the river so they wouldn't get killed because, of course, they decided, okay, let's kill all the babies so they won't overthrow us, but that's not that best idea. And of course, the Moses just happened, baby Moses just happened to go to uh, the Pharaoh's wife, and yeah, it becomes part of the royal family. Maybe he can help his people there, maybe, or maybe not. So Moses grows up in the palace with his new foster brother, who doesn't know his not foster brother, half that brother, uh, Ramesses. Their relationship's the main point of the movie. They start off as good friends, and Moses doesn't make fun of Ramesses' weird haircut, either. And they run through the palace in comedic style. The comedic parts of this movie don't work that well, because it tries to be really serious and dramatic, and then it'll have really odd comedic moments that don't work. Like this uh, chariot scene. There's some weird little scenes in there. Whoa. So Pharaoh gets pissed off that they kind of destroyed some stuff in their chariot race there. Though he mostly just derates his, his, own, his blood son, Ramesses, because he's supposed to be better than this. He doesn't seem to care about Moses that much, oddly enough. He seems like, hey, do what the hell you want, kid. You're not my responsibility. Anyway, he's a porn character because he is what molds our villain, who, spoiler alert, is Ramesses, become hardened. His heart becomes hardened in this version. It doesn't... Well, I'll get to that later. So despite coming from the capital and they're not trying to get in trouble, even though they got in trouble already, they're late to something. Which doesn't make any sense. Like, what were you, what were you guys, what were you guys doing? So yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. So yeah, they get this a uh, slave, I guess, a uh, not not a, a Jewish slave, but someone else from far away, I guess. I don't know what she's doing here, to be honest. 
Uh, we see where she's from later on. But I guess Moses is like, hey, I want this woman. But she escapes from him. Well, later on, she escapes. And of course, he sighs like, where is this woman going? Well, that's when he finds his original family who reveal that he is not a part of the royal family. He is, in fact, a Jew. Dun, dun, dun. If you couldn't tell by the fact, he actually has brown hair and isn't bald like everyone else. I don't know why the everyone else is bald. Don't, don't ask me on that part. I guess these people making this movie didn't know that uh, the Egyptians had hair. This is a culture shock, thinking that he, learning that he is no longer a prince of Egypt. Well, he technically is still a prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt, Prince of Egypt. And he has a monologue song. Also, he's voiced by Val Kilmer, in case you can tell, who can no longer sing. Poor guy. One of the weirdest scenes happens in the movie where we're into a hieroglyph vision. It just doesn't really look that good animated. Plus, all the stuff we're showing here is stuff that we have already established, so it's like, what is the point? We know that we knew who he is now. We also knew the original scene. I mean, we, were, we watched it. The CGI doesn't mesh well. The 2D animation that we're going for, it just feels like a lot of filler, at least in my point, point of view. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of this scene. It just doesn't look that great and it's a repeat of what we already saw. So Moses is like, maybe I should help out a little bit, just instead of being a jackass on the sidelines. But of course this doesn't end well when this guy has been whipping this old guy. He's like, hey, don't do that. But then I guess he pushed him a little bit too hard and he dies. Hey, maybe we should have tackled the guy. So Moses decides to run away from home because he can no longer stand what he is. A Jew. He runs away and finds himself in this village of people. Welcome in after he saves some kids, I guess. Not really saves them, but saves them. The people from stealing their crap. Which we're introduced to our next song, which is not a very good one in my opinion. The song is sung by Santa Claus here, who says, who sings the most uh, overly uh, religious sounding song in the movie. It's very cheesy. It's okay, but it it's not my cup of tea. My cup of tea is no cup of tea because tea sucks. So yeah, Moses marries that one girl because she's also part of this village. I forgot to mention that, but it's not really that important. She's not it doesn't really play that big a role. And yeah, that's 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 it. He also becomes a shepherd. I forgot to mention that. Well, you, you probably already knew that. He finds this weird uh, burning bush, but I don't really like it's burning. It's more like it has some weird uh, CGI things going off it. But turns out this is just any burning bush. This is another thing. God Himself. And here comes my critiques in the movie, or more or less religious religious critiques. Uh, God is an asshole in the story, or should I call him Yahweh, because that's what his official name is in the uh, Old Testament, I guess, or whatever, whatever book it is, it's confusing. Uh, so yeah, he's God is voiced by none other than Moses himself, Val Kilmer, because I guess he wanted to have double roles here. And he's like, uh, listen, even though I can create everybody, I, I, I don't know how to free my own people from my other people. Also, these one people are my people because they believe in me and not a bunch of uh, dogs, I guess, or dog guys and, and eagle guys and hippo, hippo people. Uh, I only like being worshipped, so these people need to die. Also, they enslaved my people, even though that never happened in real life. So yeah, just uh, go over and free them, I guess. I won't really help you that much. And, I mean, it might seem like I'm being harsh, but my problem with this version of mythology is that in Greek or even ancient Egyptian, which they mention here, is that they those gods have limitations, so you can make stories based on that. The god of the Bible has zero limitations. That's and but he's making his people do his work, but he also can do whatever the hell he wants. He can flood the world if he wants and kill everybody. But he decides like I'm gonna make it the most difficult and possible way pop to do and uh we'll get to that when we get to that. So Moses is just chilling with sheep, sheep, you know, like shepherds do, when he hears some weird crap coming from his cave. So Moses comes back to Egypt where he finds that his brother Ramesses is now Pharaoh. But he's like, I want to free my people. Which would be fine, but you know, God's supposed to be on his side. But all God does is make his little uh, staff there turn to a snake. Which isn't really that impressive or really going to showcase anything. I mean, that's really lame when you've got You could just told them, could have cut down there like you did with the fucking bush, and told them to free them, but, of course, this version doesn't do that. What an awful uh, character. I say character because God doesn't work. It's not real. Sorry, everybody. So we get the worst song in the movie, sung by these two high priests who are supposed to be funny, but they're not. The problem with the song is that, uh, one, it acts like, uh, 
the ancient Egyptian mythology is not good compared to uh, Christian and Judaism, which is wrong because ancient Egyptian mythology is pretty cool. I mean, Anubis is awesome, and so is Ra. But you know what isn't awesome? Yahweh. He sucks. Or Adam and Eve. They suck too. And so did Noah and his dumbass Ark. That's, that story makes no sense. Logically speaking, you look up the Bill and I thing, and you'll see how little Noah's Ark makes sense. But anyway, uh, like I said, uh, putting down a religion is something that uh, the Abrahamic religions are good at. And this song is also really bad. It's slow, it has terrible pacing, it's boring. This is the part where kids go to the bathroom during. So, Ramesses does not want to free this, the Jews because he's pissed off that Moses doesn't want to be his brother anymore. Also, his dad told him not to be weak. So, yeah, he decides to fuck, say, fuck you. I'm going to make their lives even harder because you're a piece of shit. Not exactly what he said, but, you know, you get... So, Moses is like, hey, what if I turn the water red? Would that make you want to free people? Because that's what makes sense. You know, God doesn't make a lot of sense. In, in, the, in the Bible, you know, he, he doesn't make a lot of sense in general, but of course this would help him out, but of course that fails too because the, the priest can make water red too. I guess that doesn't make sense for the staff to make the whole water red. I know it's supposed to be blood, but it doesn't really come off that way or something like that. It's, it's, it's like, why of all the things you can do, God, would you make the water red of all things? It's not very impressive. I guess it kind of is, but at the same time, it just... Like, does, what, what would it do? Nothing. Because it does nothing. We are introduced to our next song of the movie, which is the uh, one of the best songs, known as The Plagues, where Moses and Ramesses sings about why they can't, well, they can't... Like, why can the other one help them out? You know? I mean, why can't you free my people? And our guy's like, why would you let me enslave your people? Of course, his perception doesn't make any sense. But hey, it's basically a part of the uh, plague part of the, uh, of course that part goes by really fast because it happens in the song. But yeah, of course he sends the plagues because, you know, God isn't really good at changing people's hearts. In fact, in the Bible, the direct saying is that God sure makes the, the Pharaoh's heart harden so he won't do it, which makes no sense. But then again, God likes killing people. He made that one guy try to kill his son at one time, and he's like, oh, just kidding. Remember that part? Remember that part where God killed a whole city of people because they were gay? Remember that part? And then he made, like, the one guy who, who didn't, wasn't gay, uh, rape his daughters, because that was the good thing to do? Look that up. Look up Asami Gamora and tell me what the hell is the moral of that story. So the next part of the plagues is the final one, where in order for the hero people to not have their, uh, their firstborn kid die, they have to kill a sheep and wipe blood on their door of the sheep, which is a waste of sheep if you ask me. Also, why couldn't God tell which one was the chosen people or not? He's supposed to be all-knowing because he's stupid. Ugh, oh well. And of course, this kills the Pharaoh's kid. Well, you know, he got, I think he could have just made the Pharaoh give him up, or at least just showed it yourself and say, this is not right, but you know, whatever, like, killing people is just your motto, I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about, the character like it exists. It doesn't. Yahweh does not exist. I'm glad it doesn't, because... He's really bad at settling uh, arguments. Let's just say that. But it's okay. So we get our next song, which isn't really that good, even though it's about belief. We believed, even though it, it took forever for us to get free, with God's help, because God isn't very good at helping out people. Yeah, he destroyed all of Egypt and probably our, our sanity too, because if they, if he, the Pharaoh wanted to broaden their workload and stuff like that, imagine how hard it was after that one time. But it's okay, because we believed. Hopefully this will never happen again in our history. Spoiler alert, it happens multiple times. Oh yeah, let's see that C split. And there we go. That's, I mean, I had to show this, because it's pretty cool. It looks like the Pharaoh's come to take them back, actually, because he wanted to kill them all. Kill them all with the Metallica song. Or, not that song, the album, not what I'm talking about. But we get our most iconic scene in all of these adaptations, including the Ten Commandments. We gotta split that Red Sea, which is the only thing that's actually impressive that God does throughout the whole movie, to be honest. Because splitting a, a giant sea like that is pretty amazing. I mean, you probably should have done that from the get-go, but, I mean, he works in mysterious ways, huh? But at this point, they're, they're not gonna stop even if they do believe, because they're like, Hey, you just killed our firstborn sons. Of course we're going to try to kill these people. 
and, you know, not really thinking that smart. I know I'm seeming pretty harsh in this movie, but I'm, that's just my atheist side coming out. Sorry, I'm, I can't watch a movie that promotes bad <laughs> ideas. So the, the uh, Egyptians try to catch up with them, but they get swept away, and so does the pharaoh. All he wanted was his brother, and to have a living son, but he got nothing. He lost. I guess you chose the wrong gods to believe in. Of course, he wouldn't know that, because why would you? If you're taught all your life that this, these are the gods, then you would believe that. But, of course, that's not how uh, it works that well, I guess. And, yeah, that's most of the end of the so the movie ends with a little flash forward showing that Moses has made the Ten Commandments, which I'm sure have some great rules. I'm sure one of them has to do with slavery because, you know, how big it was that they were enslaved, you know. You wouldn't want to repeat that, right? Right? Is one of them have to do with slavery? No. None of the commandments have anything to do with slavery. Let alone rape. That's not on there either. I can't even say that word on YouTube, I just said it. Yeah, it's a pretty useless tablet, to be honest. And that's the end of Prince of Egypt. It's actually not bad, but my problem is that I'm an atheist and I don't like religious movies. Mostly because I believe they have a lot of bad messages. Mostly from the Abrahamic perspective. I don't think those books promote have a lot of good stuff in them. The New Testament it has some good stuff in it. The Old Testament, which is what this is based off, has a lot of terrible stuff in it. And I'm sorry, but that's just how I view it. I want to be honest. I think the movie is good, but do I think it's great? No. It has some good songs. Some songs fall flat. I think the religious message is bad, especially since the the Bible does not condemn slavery at all, even though they were enslaved, apparently, which, like I said, doesn't happen in real life. The, the fact that there's a like, text in the beginning saying this is his, trying to be historically accurate, which it isn't, because, it, like I said, none of this stuff happened in real life. You can look it up yourself. Uh, and overall, I think it's it's okay. Not great, but not bad. For first time viewing, I thought it was, this was pretty good. The more and more I watched it, the less and less I seemed to like it. It doesn't really... When you see a bunch of anime movies, and even the ones that are as grand, try to be as grand, it just doesn't really hold up, at least in my opinion. If you're religious and you like it, that's all on you, but I am not. So I can't like, give it a higher rating. I'm giving it based on what I feel. So, I'm sorry this is low, 6, compared to a lot of people give it, but I'm just giving what I say. I think that, in my honest opinion, the only reason to watch this movie is to watch the, the, the uh, Deliver Us and Plagues. Other than that, you can skip the rest of the movie. It's really not that interesting. And like I said, I think the moral is pretty bad if you look into the what it's like promoting, which is a book that contradicts itself all the time. So, sorry about this weird review, but they made a religious movie, and I'm... <laughs> I have a lot to say about religion. So, there you go. I'll see you in the next review, which will be a lot better, because I want to talk about religion. Which will be the movie known as Road to El Dorado. See you then.